Hi everyone, welcome back to Newegg TV. My name is Paul and today we have a Gigabyte A75 UD4H motherboard featuring the A75 chipset and the FM1 socket. That's Fusion Medium 1, so it supports the new line of A-series APUs made by AMD. All right, so let's start off by taking a closer look at some of the marketing material we have here on the box to learn a little bit more about the board. First of all, you get a three-year warranty through Gigabyte if you purchase this in the United States or Canada. Uh, if you're using this board in the FM1 socket, you're going to be using an APU made by AMD, and that has a built-in integrated GPU. So for that GPU, you have a dual-link DVI out that can have up to 2560 by 1600 max resolution. You also have a display port out and an HDMI out, and of course the APUs are DirectX 11 compatible. Uh, you also get Gigabyte's double copper PCB construction. And as this is a 4 series, Super 4 series motherboard, you have 1, 2, 3, and 4 items here, which I'm going to talk about more after I flip around here to the back of the box. So first of all, it's super safe. Uh, a couple reasons for that. You have a one fuse per USB port design to help prevent uh, USB overvolting. Uh, you also have a dual BIOS feature that will allow you to update the BIOS on one and still have the other for a backup. So you can't kill your motherboard by accidentally having a power outage during a BIOS update. It's very handy to have that. Uh, also, it is an EFI BIOS, so it supports booting from, ter from three terabyte plus hard drives. Number two down here is super speed, and uh, that is thanks to the ultra, ultra durable design, uh, the three times USB power boost and on-off charge functionality, and DirectX graphics performance thanks to the uh, AMD APUs. Super savings, you get, uh, you get special MOSFETs and caps that uh, improve your power consumption, uh, better power efficiency, and you also have lower temperature in your CPU area. And finally, Super Sound, you have 108 decibel signal to noise ratio sound chip built in uh, that's also Dolby Home Theater compatible. And uh, you also get an eSATA port. Let's now take a look at what we get inside the box. We'll start off with accessories. And for accessories, you get one, two, three, four total serial ATA cables. Uh, two of these are, have straight plugs on both ends, and two of them have an L shaped bracket on one end. So, four total serial ATA cables. You, of course, get a gigabyte powered sticker for the outside of your case. You get an input-output shield, also for your case, to put on the back where all your motherboard input-outputs stick through. Uh, you also get a gigabyte full user's manual that you will want to keep on hand while you're doing your build. Very important. And you also get a gigabyte driver disk. This is handy to have on hand, but it's always best to check the gigabyte website to make sure that there are no updated drivers for the hardware. Also, you have a gigabyte multilingual installation manual. And that is all for accessories. Next up we have the motherboard itself, which is in an anti-static bag. So here is a full look at the A75 UD4H. All together we see a nice blue PCB and overall we have a blue, gray, and white design. Uh, we're going to go over all the different ports and plugs on the board, starting down here in the bottom left with our motherboard front panel header connectors. And if you can see inside there, all of those are color-coded to give you a little bit more assistance in plugging in your front panels. Next to that, we have two front panel USB 3.0 ports. Those are both controlled by the A75 chipset. Next to that, we have one, two, three, four USB 2.0 front panel ports. So uh, all told, four front panel USB 3.0 port uh, plugs that could be connected there, and eight front panel USB 2.0 ports that could be plugged in there. So lots of USB connectivity with this motherboard. Next to that we have a Firewire out 1394 with a little plug cover on there. And on the far left we have the audio front panel header and that is clearly labeled with a little green plug that says audio on the inside. Uh, next up let's talk about our PCI slots right up here from top to bottom. So we have three single speed PCI slots right there. We have a PCI Express I'm sorry, I should say these are three PCI Express one-speed slots. We have a single PCI Express 16-speed slot, and then we have another single PCI Express 16-speed size slot, but this is an eight-speed physical slot. Finally, on the bottom, we have two legacy PCI slots for any of your legacy PCI devices. Moving over here to the right side of the board, we can see this nice gray uh, chipset heat sink, and that is for our A75 chipset. Over here on the far right, well, I should mention we have a four-pin system fan header right there. That's PWM capable from the four-pin header. And then finally, we have our serial ATA ports. 
five are right here. Again, these are all controlled by the A75 chipset. One more is located on the back of the board. That's an eSATA port, and we'll show you that. So four of these are side facing. You can see right there. And then the fifth faces up right there next to the chipset. Moving right along up the board, we have a comm header right there. We have our 24-pin power connector. And then next to that, we have our four DDR3 memory slots, and these support DIMM sizes of up to 8 gigabytes, uh, although it's kind of hard to find 8 gigabyte non-ECC DIMMs right now, but all of these are 1.5 volt DDR3 DIMMs. It is dual channel, so you can have up to 32 gigs of memory total. Uh, and bear in mind that if you're using more than 4 gigs, you'll definitely want to get a 64-bit operating system. Right up here on top, we have our CPU fan header, that's a 4-pin. And then next to that, we have our FM1 socket. This is an AMD FM1 socket. This is my first time looking at an FM1 socket, and they're pretty distinguishable because they have a hole right there in the middle. And these are the brackets to connect your uh, CPU's heatsink fan. Next to that, we have the CPU VRM area for providing power to the CPU, or I should say APU, and this is an 8 plus 2 phase uh, power delivery system that they've set up. We also have a heat sink right next to there for the VRMs. Finally, up here in the top left, we have our 8-pin supplemental CPU power connector. That's an EPS connector. What I should point out, here's another uh, case fan header. That's a 3-pin. Finally, I said finally twice. I'm aware of that. But now we're talking about uh, input outputs. These are our input outputs on the back of the board. Over here, we have a keyboard or mouse plug. That's a PS2 plug. Beneath that, we have two USB 3.0 ports. Over here, we have two more USB 3.0 ports. These are controlled by an additional controller on the motherboard. They're Etron EJ168 chips that control those USB 3.0 ports. And these are all covered with little plastic nubs, which I will pull off. We have uh, video outputs, and these are for the iGPU that is integrated with the APU that you will install in your FM1 socket. So that will vary based on the APU that you've chosen. But you have a VGA out, you have the aforementioned dual link DVI out, you have an HDMI out, and you have a display port out. Up here on the top, we have an optical audio out for a toss link cable. Right here, we have two more USB 2.0 ports. We have another FireWire port, and we have an eSATA port. And again, that one is also controlled by the A75 chipset. Right here we have a Ethernet port, and this Ethernet port is controlled by Realtek RTL8111E chip. And then finally we have all of our audio outs, and these are controlled by Realtek ALC889 codec, high definition audio, support 7.1 channel audio out, uh, Dolby Home Theater, and SPDIF. One last thing to reiterate about the FM1 socket and the AMD A series of APUs, that is that they have an integrated GPU, which is why AMD calls them APUs or accelerated processing units. If you purchase just the APU, you don't need an, a discrete graphics card as well. You can use the video, video outs on this side of the motherboard, but if you decide to, after the fact, or if you want to purchase one with the motherboard, you can get a discrete graphics card, and if you purchase an AMD graphics card, you can use it in tandem with the APU in a Crossfire X-like technology that AMD calls dual graphics. That's going to wrap it up for today's unboxing and overview. This has been the Gigabyte a75 UD4H motherboard. My name's Paul. If you enjoyed today's video, please subscribe to our Newegg TV YouTube channel for more videos just like it. Thanks for watching, and we will see you next time.